Hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me well? Yep. Yep. Okay, great. Because it's raining heavily here in San Diego. Oh, right here now. Uh, in the afternoon, it's raining a lot, but in short time. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it started raining about 10 minutes ago. So I don't know how long it's going to be. Okay, okay. Hopefully not too much, hopefully. And how was your day, Gustavo? Uh, are you at home? Are, are you driving? Are you at work? Well, uh, yesterday I was in in meeting or um, I don't know how how say junta directiva. Board of directors. Yes. Board of directors. Yeah, for that I I I I, I can't connect very well but uh, it's nice today I, I was busy about a uh, present offer for for two a uh, office of government oh, okay. yeah so a lot of papers to do legal papers to do it's a thunder yeah, it was a thunder. <laughs> wow, it's it's heavy. Yeah, it's I don't know what's going on here, but <laughs> they say that it, I mean they predicted that that was it was going to rain yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Supposedly, it's going to be worse <laughs> in okay. Salvador because of the hurricane. I think it was Grace uh, that was on the way to Mexico by the Atlantic mm. Ocean, so we got a little bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. So you can expect rains for tomorrow too. All night, well, but, but it's, it's the weekend it's start raining for me is very, very good. Yeah, that would be great because it's the time what, what, that you stay at home, right? Yeah, exactly. And the weather is more fresh, more, it's not too hot. Exactly. Let's hope that it's like that. And that people are not too affected because of the rain, yeah. because that's another issue. We live in a country where a lot of people suffer the, the this kind of rain. Yeah, in other way. Yeah. Another way, yeah, it's, it's dangerous for them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, so Brenda, are you there? We have Juan Jose, Freddy's, Roxana, Miguel, Janari, Maria Eugenia, Blanca. Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Uh, good, evening, here. Teacher. good evening, Diana is connecting. Good evening. Hello, welcome, guys. Is it raining where you live? Not yet. Not yet. Good Not evening. Good evening. Does it seem like it's going to rain? In Acajutla, it's cloudy. It's cloudy, okay. I'm in my mother's in love house, and it seems like normal. Okay, a normal weather. In a Popa city, only lightning. That's why I'm using the another background. <laughs> okay, are you from your phone? Yeah. It yeah, today I'm from my cell phone. So it is because possible, it is possible to change the background. Because I don't have my computer here. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, let's continue with the weather report. What's the weather like in, in your city, Juan Jose? A popa uh, is good, a cahoot is in good. San Marcos is not sign for it was to rain. I, it there are no rain. signs of rain. I, I, <laughs> no, I think that I hope that <laughs> it don't rain. Yeah, okay, Yanari. But I don't know. In this moment, I don't know. It's unpredictable, right? It's difficult to predict. And good evening. Good evening, Jackie. What's the weather like in your city? It's in, uh, in here, here is not raining, but in the afternoon, yes. Oh, okay. It was raining. Where, where exactly are you, uh, Yanari? Okay, Jackie, can you go on? Excuse me, teacher. Could you repeat, please? No, I was asking you, what's the weather like in your city? Ah, uh, it's hot today. Hot, okay. So it's not going to rain soon. Harbin, Diego, welcome. Good evening. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Okay, guys. So, uh, how are you feeling today? It's Thursday, so we're getting closer to the weekend. Okay, so we're ready, I think, um, yeah. If by any reason you do not hear me well, please let me know because I was telling um, your classmates that it's raining cats and dogs here in San Miguel right now. It started about, I don't know, 20 minutes ago. So I don't know how, how long it's going to last. Okay, so let's mm -hmm. check, Beatriz, are you there? Mariela? I'm here. Excellent. Uh, we continue with Blanca. I'm here. Okay, Blanca, how was your trip to San Miguel? Very tired, but Very tiring. Uh, yeah, I fell asleep in the bus, on the bus, on the bus, uh -huh. on the bus. <laughs> two times. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it was good, but it's too hot in in the afternoon. Very hot, and and I hate uh, the hot weather. I hate with all my life. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. when I when I came in the bus, <laughs> I have to call because they have conditioner air. Air conditioner. Uh -huh. Air conditioner. Yeah. <laughs> and I had cold. I I feel cold. I feel cold. You felt cold. Yeah. You got you got cold, yeah. right? Okay, but yeah. it's good that you nothing happened, right? Everything was good. Yeah. Fun, trip, I know. <laughs> It, it was good that that it wasn't raining in the afternoon because I I don't have umbrella <laughs> and I was worried about that. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Uh, thank you for sharing, Blanca. We continue with uh, Brenda, Diana.
Diego? Present. Floor? Francisco? Here, teacher. Okay, Freddy. I'm here. Laura? Not here, Jackie? Present. Arvin. Present teacher. Jennifer. Juan Jose. I'm here teacher. Gustavo. I'm here teacher. Teacher, sorry, uh, I'm here. Um, I was in the bathroom, sorry. Okay, okay, don't worry. That's fine. Uh, we continue with Who is Miguel Angel. She? Who is she? Her that name girl? is Who is her she? name is Diana. Oh Diana, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here teacher. New look, new look. <laughs> okay, Fabio. <laughs> I'm here. Okay, welcome back, Rolando. Yanari. Hey, Laura is here. Nice. Uh, Roxana. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. Roxana. Elizabeth. Okay, nice. And Suleyma. Teacher, I'm here, Yanari. Okay, Yanari, thank you. I got you now. Let's go on. Okay. So, as uh, you remember, uh, yesterday we had... Okay, so according to Flor, it is raining cats and dogs and cows in the place where she is. <laughs> okay, let's go on. Uh, be careful with the cows, Flora. Now, we're going to remember a little bit uh, about what we did yesterday. So yesterday was the writing and reading Wednesday. So what did we do yesterday? Anybody who remembers? We practice the reading and writing. Okay. So uh, we're practicing on the website, right? As you can see in the video uh, from yesterday's class, I recommend you to watch that part of the video at the beginning of the session when I was explaining to students how to create the username, the code to use uh, to join the class, okay? To join the class. So in case that somebody has problems to join the group uh, for, to practice reading, please let me know so that I can help you to create your account. The idea is that you're going to be practicing um, reading every week, right? And um, every Wednesday, we're going to take around 10 minutes to practice uh, with exercises related to reading. So far, there are just 12 students uh, who already joined the, the class. So again, I am going to uh, share the link with the indications in the group in the chat so please copy the information the website is that one then you are going to select sign up and then uh, you are going to enter your username a name that you select a password that you are not going to forget and the code the group code 
Uh, I am going to share the group code or the class code in the chat so you can use that code to automatically sign up or join the group. So when you join the class, you are going to click I'm ready and you will start taking answering some questions based on the readings that you are given. So I am going to check your progress. I'm going to see how much you have read. And um, this is how I'm going to, to see the, 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 the progress. I'm going to share a little picture through the group. So you can see that I have your names. I can see how many quizzes you have taken and the scores that you have got. That is the way that I'm going to monitor that you are practicing reading because remember that one of the best ways to learn vocabulary, to learn grammar, to learn a language is by reading. So you improve your comprehension and you increase your vocabulary uh, knowledge. So um, I sent you the picture already to the WhatsApp group so you can see how I am going to measure your pro your progress. Okay, so the class code. This is not an evaluation. This is this is this is the class the class code the uh, you send it from. The chat. Yeah, I sent through the chat and I'm going to send you a picture with the code. BQH. So you can do this later after the class or tomorrow or on the weekend, but I would recommend you to practice at least five readings every week. So that would be the minimum that I would recommend you to do. If you could do a little bit more than five, maybe one reading every day, that would be really nice, right? So um, you can see your progress too. This is the Atacama Desert, right? Or the, not oh, right? Yeah, there's one reading about the Atacama Desert. That's right. Okay, okay, okay. I was checking if it's- So, so if far, I... I already have Roxana, Miguel, Laura, Juan, Juan Jose, Harvin, Jackie, uh, Gamerito, uh, Gustavo, Freddy's. Me. Gamerito, I think it's Diego, right? Um, then we have Francisco. Yes. Uh, Blanca, Diana, and Anonymous is Beatriz. So, uh, just try not to forget the password, right? Because that's important. And start reading okay start reading that's individual you practice in the time that you can and as i told you it's not an evaluation it's something that will help you to improve okay increase your knowledge now we're going to move on and um that's one thing that we did yesterday we had a dictation activity to practice writing and and we were talking we we're practicing a conversation okay about focus focus group exactly we talk about focus groups and we discuss some questions in the breakout rooms okay so that's what we did and right now i am going to um, start by sharing with you what we're doing today ah we had a little spelling uh activity so everybody had to spell one word that one of the words that we have been practicing right during the the module and there was a little assignment for you to answer the questions on page number 21. So today we're going to check the answers. The questions are about the conversation that we practice. So it, they're very easy. And let's move on. So what are we doing today? Uh, we're going to mention or talk a little bit about focus groups, just a little review. Um, and we're going to use product line vocabulary as well as, as well as 
how to use transitions of addition. Transitions of addition. And you might be wondering, what is that? I am going to explain, okay? I'm going to explain it later and we're going to practice. So welcome to the session 11. That is the first session of the week number three. So, um, and today is Thursday, so we're going to learn a little bit more. Now, let's go on. Um, these are the questions that we, well, that, that you were going to answer. Focus on or based, based on the conversation, okay? This is the conversation between Moises and Fernanda. So the question is, how many focus groups will participate in the test? Please raise your hand if you want to give the answer, if you want to participate, if you want to ask a question or say something. Ganari? And the answer is three focus groups. Three focus groups. Do you agree with Yanari? 24, I think. 24. Three group. 24 members. No, 24 is I participants. Yes, yeah, the group are three. The group are three. Correct. Okay. Sorry, that's right, sorry. No, it's okay. So this is the idea, right? We discuss, we share the opinions. So three groups of at least. What is the meaning or the translation of at least? Por lo menos. Por lo menos, yes. Por lo menos, al menos, right? At least. At least 24 members. Now, number two. What type of sample has Fernanda selected for their testing product? Or their testing process, sorry. Random. Random testing process. Random. Do you random. agree? You agree with Roxana? We're go they're going to use random testing sample. Yeah. Random. random sample. That's correct. Random. Okay. Let me write down the answers. So the number one, it's three groups of at least. 24 members each, or 24 participants each, right? What type of test? You said random sample. testing sample, or random sample testing. Uh huh. Sample. The last one, it's it's Lucas, right? Wait a second. Lucas. Wait a second. <laughs> okay, I'm going to uh, go back. So random sample. 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 Testing, okay. And that would be the, the testing process they will use, okay? And who will design the questionnaire? Lucas and Moises. Lucas, okay. Lucas and Moises. Lucas and Moises. Yes. Yeah. So we have two people, okay. Lucas and Moises. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. So those are the answers for the three questions, okay? Uh, if you want to know a little bit more about this, you can watch the example of three aguas I was telling you, right? So it, it would be nice that you see how they do the product development, okay, in that company. Now, I'm going to clear all the drawings. And for the people who could not be in yesterday's session, uh, what is a focus group? Can some volunteers help us to explain with your own words? What is a focus group? What is the purpose of a focus group? Mm -hmm. 
Beatriz, thank you. Beatriz, you raise your hand. We cannot hear you, Beatriz. Maybe you have some problems with the microphone. Yeah. Okay, so who who wants to help Beatriz with the definition? Diego? Uh, it is a way of giving our opinion and discussing a product. It is a way of giving an opinion uh, and discussing about a product. Okay, thank you. Diana? Uh, I think the main, the main objective of this testing is that you can have a group of people that is similar to your target audience mm -hmm. and they can um, try your product and give you a feedback. And give you feedback. Okay, so that is important. Feedback, it's when people give you their opinions, they give you their criticism, right? About their thoughts about something. Okay, so that's feedback. Um, okay, let's go on. Thank you so much to Diego and Diana and Beatriz also try to participate, but she had some problems with the microphone. So we continue with the next uh, topic. Okay, so in the last conversation, we pay attention to some words, okay? The words were in addition and furthermore, right? So furthermore in addition are two interesting expressions that we can use or the words that we can use when we want to add more information. Uh, what is the position of these two expressions according to the conversation? What is the, what are some similarities, some characteristics that you see in these two words or two phrases? Connecting or adding something? They are no. used for adding, uh -huh, adding something. What is the position of these words? In the middle, at the end of the sentence? Beginning. At in the, the beginning. beginning. At the beginning. Okay, at the beginning of the sentence. Uh, what, what else do you see they have in common? There is one more aspect they have in common. I think both uh, other. Um, both other. Uh, a comma. So a comma. they add more information to the, to the text. They uh, go <laughs> at the beginning of the sentence and they have a comma, okay, following um, the word. So those are the three characteristics that we can identify right now. Good. So these words are transitions of addition, okay? So we are going to study some of these expressions, okay? I need a volunteer to read the first, uh, the first lines, the first two lines. Please raise your hand. Roxana. Ah, oh, Rolando. Rolando. Okay, letter A. The, no, the first part in the blue box. Ah, okay, let me check. Transition words. Transition, transition words like in addition. Like in addition, furthermore. Furthermore. More, furthermore, moreover, and besides, add, add information, reinforce ideas, and express agreement with ideas that have been presented previously. Okay, exactly. So, um, let me, okay. So here we have, uh, in addition, furthermore, moreover, and besides. These are four very common used transition words. Uh, they are called transition words because they are uh, changing. They are changing the, the ideas. So there are transition words for addition. There are transition words for contrasting. 
there are Sometimes transition complete, words for uh, complete, complete ideas for finishing for finishing the ideas to start the ideas to compare because contrast i mean contrasting and comparing are two different things right uh they're similar but not the same then you have um some to let's say to oppose to oppose and and so on there are more types of transition words um i'm going to share a link with you about about that I will share that uh, through the WhatsApp group in a moment by an image, okay? Then in the sentence, letter A, one volunteer to read the letter A, please. <clears throat> No. Teacher. Okay, go ahead, Diana, and then Floor, and we have Diego. Letter Diego, A. Yeah, letter A. Will we work with the targeted or random samples? In addition, we need to discuss who will be hosting each group and the location of each. And the location of each, correct. So uh, that's letter A. Letter B? Floor. Furthermore, it's necessary to create a well-designed questionnaire to get the specific information we require. We require. So in this case, I made the observation, right, that the pronunciation of a questionnaire is with the stress in the last syllable. So that will be questionnaire, right? Questionnaire. So I made that observation yesterday. Uh, questionnaire and require. Furthermore, thank you so much, Floor. We continue with um, letter C. That would be Diego. Okay. In order, in order to sell a focus group to test a product, it's, it's important to gather to gather a group of participants who make direct use of the final product of service. Moreover, it's necessary to show a moderate, moderate, moderator. moderator for every group. Okay, correct. So um, I'm going to send you the link right now so you can have access to more explanations and more information about transition words. Okay, so. Um, in this case, the word is moreover, okay, moreover. So in this case, moreover is not at the beginning, it's in between, right, after the semicolon. So that can be a position, okay, if you don't want to cut the idea. So it could go there, okay, but you need to put it between commas or between semicolon and then a comma, right? So that is when the idea is connected and you are not separating them. Okay, so we go with the next volunteer. I don't know who that person was. I saw somebody raise a hand, but I don't remember who. I think it was Yanari. Yanari? I tried to share, but my internet is bad. <laughs> oh, okay. So try with the first part of the punctuation right here punctuation yeah notice that the transition in addition and for furthermore in a and b are preceded 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 by the question preceded thank you by the, by a question mark and a period and followed by a comma correct so in a and b they are uh, preceded by a question mark right uh, and then uh, in a period and followed by a comma. Excellent. And letter C, Juan Jose. Okay. In C, the transition moreover is preceded by a sem semicolon and following by a comma. And followed by a comma, right? So it's preceded by a semicolon. 
about punctuation, okay? There are some words that you have to remember. Uh, so we have period. We say point when it's about numbers. But when it's about letters, we say period. So we have period, we have comma, we have colon, that is the two, those puntos, right? Colon. We have semicolon. We have exclamation point. Okay, exclamation point. We have question mark. So uh, take notes, right? Question mark. I'm going to create a little text next to this. So we have the... This one would be colon. Okay. This would be semicolon. This is period. This will be the comma that you already know. It's, I mean, it's not really necessary to use it, to, to write it down. I'm going to go on with the exclamation one. But in English, we only use one. So let's say that is this one, exclamation point. Okay, and then we have the question mark. Uh, if you want to, I don't know, ask about others, uh, we have, for example, the, what other symbols do you remember in English or in Spanish that you want to know? Comillas. Okay, comillas. Quotation marks or just quotations, uh, but quotation Pare marks. Parentheses. Uh, parentheses is the same. Parenthesis is the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, parenthesis is similar, but the writing is different, right? The spelling is different. So, uh, quotation marks. We have uh, ellipsis. That would be ellipsis. Ellipsis, or when you're, when people are saying that, that, that. Like, that's another way to say it, but it's ellipsis. Um, then we have... A, at, at, at. At, at, uh -huh. So at is the arroba, right? So we say at. Freddy Marcus at gmail.com, right? So that would be at. And this one, for example, also hyphen. Also, also the arroba say at time, no? At time. At time. Mm -hmm. At time. Not sure about that one, but I just know at. Okay. Uh, then we have um, the guión bajo, right? That is underscore. And dot. Symbol, is dot? symbol of the dollar. The dollar sign. It's dollar sign. Yeah, it's a dollar sign. Ah. Uh, and and I mean, there are so many more. For example, uh, we cannot forget about slash, but not the guitar player from Guns N' Roses. No, it's slide, the slash is the pleca, right? Teacher. Hello. Uh, what about dot? Dot com, for example. We use it for, yeah, we use it for navigation, uh, for the internet. We use that. Yeah. Uh, but just for text, we use period. Slash. Uh, one that is long, like, like that, is a dash. And I think these are the most important ones. We have parentheses, but it's... I mean, it's parenthesis, parenthesis. You see us the, 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 the spelling that is different. Uh, parenthesis. Well, the plural is with E, parenthesis. Uh, that is um, different to ellipsis. 
Dash oh. es, es un guión largo, pero no, no encuentro. Oh, ok, ok. Uh, I don't find the combination for that one. Yeah. Okay, so just for your information, right? There are uh, a lot of symbols and this is vocabulary that probably you're not going to use very often in English, but it's important to know, right? So um, let's go on, especially if you're going to be practicing writing. And now, show must go on. Therefore, that's one of my favorite uh, transition words, therefore. Uh, Juan Jose, you have a question or comment? Juan Jose? Hello, hello. Okay. I cannot hear you, Juan Jose, so maybe you can. Yes, excuse me, oh. excuse me. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, when I say moreover, and uh -huh. or furthermore, yes. um, the meaning is similar? Yes. Yeah, the four words, the four words are, are have the same meaning, adding more information. But okay. the only difference would be the formality. I, uh, if you say in addition or furthermore, the two expressions are more formal than moreover or besides. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so they are more formal. Next, uh, we have Fabio. Can you please read the next one, please? The last lines. The decision to separate the two ideas with a period question mark plus transition or with a semicolon plus transition is a matter of personal style. Correct. So if you see in letter A, B, and C, there are different uh, positions, different ways of using the transition words. But it depends on your personal style, your personal decision, right? How you want to use them. Okay, so that's the information that I wanted to share with you about transition words. The com there is a more complete list in the website that I share with you through the WhatsApp uh, group. So you can check it out later uh, to study more. Okay, because we have cause and effect, we have uh, different types of transition words. And what is the purpose or what is the intention of using transition words? Uh, basically that, mm -hmm, exactly. So Fred is already sharing some information. So he's using the dictionary, you can see there. Uh, what I want to tell you is that when you use these kinds of words, your English level goes up automatically, okay? Uh, because people can tell. When you use this kind of vocabulary, like in addition, furthermore, people know that you have learned English in a, in a, in a formal way, okay? So uh, your English level sounds better. Your English sounds better when you use this kind of transition words because you sound more, uh, let's say like, uh, like a university level, for example. So people know, okay, because of the vocabulary that you include in your, in, your, in your speech or when you're writing. Something that is important to know is that people are more formal when they are writing than when they are speaking. So in writing, it is common to see formal English. But when people are speaking, they use a lot of contractions, a lot of uh, reduction of the sounds, a lot of linkings. So, uh, but when you're writing, it's not recommended to use contractions, to use uh, informal vocabulary. No, you need to be very careful with punctuation, with capitalization, with how you divide the paragraphs, uh, how you organize your ideas. So it, writing is more formal than speaking. So keep that in mind next time that you're going to write an email or you're going to send a message, right, to someone uh, in your job, for example. So um, that's all, that's all. So 
Do you have any questions about the transition words right now? Anybody who has a doubt or a comment? Is this clear for you guys? I need to know if it is clear or you have doubts. For now, yes, teacher. Okay, for now, that's a, that's a good a good answer, right? So far, no questions, teacher. So far, everything's clear. So far, so good. Okay, now let's go on. Like horchata. Like horchata, <laughs> exactly. So we're going to make a little pause. We're going to make a little pause on grammar and vocabulary because what's next? Trivia. Are you sure? No, no, it's a joke. <laughs> okay. No, it is true. We're going, we're going to start with the, well, let me show you the slide. I have it here. Yeah, we have Trivia Thursday. So we're getting ready to practice. Now, this time uh, we're going to, um, I'm not sure if you rather, I mean, if you rather continue with the same uh, teams, like <laughs> ladies versus gentlemen, or you rather use a different uh, style, a different a different team, or what would you prefer? The same. The same one. Yes, we need to the revenge. Revenge. Yes, revenge. Okay, okay, revenge. It's okay. So we're going to uh, go on. What kind of hair you have? What? What kind of ha hair he has? What kind of what? Hair. Hard. Heart. Mm -hmm, yes. <laughs> I don't know. I cannot say that. Okay. Today Today I came to see Juliana because the the last session you didn't see her. Yes, uh, they searching some Google. Ah, so you think that girls? Oh, oh, that's now a I understand very that's a everything. very strong that's a very strong declaration that you're making, Francisco. Don't, but don't cry, don't cry, boys, don't cry. But now, but now, don't don't give us the more hard question. The hardest. Yeah, the more hardest. Sorry, the hardest, only hardest, the hardest questions. Okay, now for the boat, not only for for us. Exactly, this time is going to be different. I am not going to be choosing categories. I'm just going to go question by question in the order they appear. So if you get an easy one, good luck. If you don't get an easy one, you learn. So, who is going to start? Head or tails? What do you prefer? What do you choose? Head or tails? Head is where you see the face of the president and tails is where you see the symbol in the back. So ladies, you choose first. Head or tails? Tails, tails. okay, they said tails. Uh, and I got, oh, wait, I lost the coin. I'm going to get another one. <laughs> uh, okay. They said tails, right? And no, you got head. So boys, you start. First question, what does, please girls watch through the cameras that the boys are not looking through the internet, they're looking at the camera only. So please cameras on, hands up. So we see that you're not typing or Googling something. Okay, hands up, right? So what does www stand for in a website browser, boys? You have five seconds to answer after I finish reading the question. If you want me to repeat the question, I can do it. Five. 
Four. Worldwide Three. Network. Worldwide Web. Worldwide Computer mm. Network. Two. Oh, Worldwide okay. Computer I'm Network. The first, the first answer can't. I will That's... yeah, I will I will continue taking the first answer. So before you say something, you have to think. So in this case, you gave me two words out of the three. So I'm going to give you half a point. Okay, half a point. Medio punto. Half a point. Let me just okay. Go on here. Okay, so uh boys, half a point. Okay, girls, you're next. The question is, how long is an Olympic swimming pool? How long is an Olympic swimming pool? In meters, in meters. If you are five meters close, I will take it correctly. Five meters close. No more. So, five. 200 meters. 200. Wow. No. Zero. 50, 50, 50 meters. It was 50, 50 meters, so no points. Okay. Half point. No. no. It was Half point because we, we have bad connection teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Girls <laughs> have bad connection today. Okay. Excuse. So it's not possible <laughs> to Google. <laughs> okay, now we continue with the next question. Boys. What countries made up the original Axis powers in the World War II? There were three countries. The Axis Five. powers in the World War II. Five. If you tell can me you two countries. Can you repeat the question, please? Okay, I can repeat the question one time. What countries made up or uh, created, right, the, or... Composed. They just want to look Composed. for it. The original um, access Google. powers in World War II. Richard, World War you gave Five, them four, three, more three, time. One. Time is up. Yeah. So, mention. All right, I can do things. Country. Germany, France, and United Kingdom? No. no. You, if you gave me zero points, you gave me two, I will give you half a point or probably the point. Teacher. The correct, answer, the correct answer were Germany, Italy, and Japan. So you only gave me it's one, her. no point. But when you when you say the question, the girls uh, talk, and I don't understand the question. Yeah. For that, uh, I, 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 I oh, tell you, oh, repeat, oh, the, oh, repeat oh, again. Oh, and oh, I agree. Oh, it's not oh, oh, to talk oh, 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 again. When it's the, girls' turn, yes, no, this, cannot say anything. When it's boys' turn, girls cannot say anything on, 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 until the five seconds are over that I count, okay? So that's the rule. Next, we we'll continue with the um, question for the girls, right? Question number two. So round one is over. Round two is right now. So girls, boys, silence, please. Which country do the cities Perth, Adelaide, Brisbane belong to? Perth, Adelaide, and Brisbane belong to? To which country do the, the cities belong to? Um, it's a country in uh, Oceania. That's all that I can say. What is the name of the cities? Earth, Adelaide, and Brisbane. One, two, three, Idea. four, five. Say one country. In Oceania. Australia, <laughs> but it's the only country that I know that belongs to Oceania. Oceania. And that is the correct answer. So. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. okay. Now, girls, you keep silence. Boys, pay attention. What geometric shape 
is generally used for stop signs, for the stop signs that you see on the street. What geometric shape is generally used? Five, four, three, two, one. Five. Zero. What ge geometric shape? Hexagon? Hexagon. I'm not sure that's a word in English, but no. The correct answer is octagon. So there are eight. sides sorry okay no points for the boys in the round three we continue with the girls boys listen girls pay attention what is xenophobia or sinophobia sinophobia oh my god it's the hate of the in ethnias ethnias or sinophobia so something like that you gave me the answer. You didn't give me time. I mean, the, the chance to count the five seconds. And yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no points. The correct what? answer is sinophobia is the fear of dogs. Wow, wow. So it's the fear of dogs, sinophobia. What? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't hear well. I, I think that you say xenophobia. No, it's Xenophobia. Sy sinophobia. Sorry, so, girls. Sorry. Next one. Don't worry. For half a point, you are winning right now. So, boys, the question for you is, what punctuation mark finishes an imperative sentence? That's too easy. Girls, no speaking. Remember that it's in order. I'm not choosing the questions. So, five, four, Three, two, one. Two, one. Quotation. What? Quotation. Wait, Francisco answered first. What was the answer? Clamation. Clamation. Exclamation. <laughs> no. Yes, exclamation point. Correct. So Francisco got it right. One point for the boys. But he pronounced it in the in the wrong way. <laughs> but I understood yeah. it, and that is the purpose of English. Hey, that people understand. The girls English. break the rules. The teacher <laughs> every is, time the girls oh, break no, the rules. Right, right now, teacher they decide can speak. is correct or incorrect, not the girl. <laughs> okay. I, I unfortunately the, the I am the referee. Girls break the so rules. I yeah. have to. I have to make a decision. Uh, Sorry. You hey. don't say anything until Francisco says something. So that was the first answer. You that have a proof. You have a you have a proof. No. Girls. Um okay. Uh, I'm sorry, is it is the order of the question? So who named the Pacific Ocean? <laughs> Who named the Pacific Ocean? If you tell it's me a name, surreal. the name or the last name, you got it right. It was a it was a boy. It was a man. Oh my Five, four, three, Did two. Why or I I I only... Who gave the Who gave the name to the Pacific Ocean? The time is over. Time is over. No answer. You can say Emilio. No. Okay, no. Platon. Platon. <laughs> no. Okay, no. Uh, it's Fernando. That was Mag Mag Magellan, Magellan, something like that. Ferdinand Magellan. That was correct. Yes. I'm sorry, Flor. Okay, Ferdinand Magellan. That was the correct answer. I'm not sure of the pronunciation, Magellan, but yes, Ferdinand. So don't forget about that, Ferdinand, name the Pacific Ocean. Boys, this is not easy either. <laughs> um, how many languages? Okay, keep your microphones off. Don't forget about that. So there's no interference. How, wait. How many languages are written from the right to the left? How many languages? If you are three numbers close or far, you get it right. Three numbers. 
How many languages are written from right to left? Five, four, three, two, one. Time's five. up. Give me a number. Four. I get the first one that is five. Anyways, it's incorrect. So the correct answer was 12. 12 languages. Don't ask me which ones. <laughs> okay. Uh, girls. I clean know the Arabic. If, okay, pay attention. If you give me at least two countries in the next question, you get it right. At least two. <laughs> Look at Francisco's reaction. You can use the reaction, right, to make fun. Now, uh, how many countries still have the shilling as currency? That is the money they use. How many countries still have the shilling as currency? The chilines, right? Which ones? You can give me how many countries if you are... Two I think that it's in away. It's an African listen, listen. country, right? If you give me two numbers close or far, you get it right. If you tell me two countries, you get it right. So you have two possibilities. Tell me the countries or the number of countries. I, I think that it's in Africa. That's not an answer. Um, Kenya, Tanzania. Kenya, Tanzania. Or Somalia, I think. Um, Somalia, yes. That's how many? Right. Time's up. Is in Africa? Yes, Again, correct. We are right. Time's up. Almost 30 seconds. Oh, it's not yeah. possible. Okay, guys. So right now we continue with a little, with half a point difference. So it's it's really tight. We hardly <laughs> we are missing five questions. So don't worry. You have time. Next, what is the name of the man, boys? Wh who, what is the name of the man who launched eBay? Back in 1995, eBay. If you tell me a name or last name, you get it right. Um, no. The correct Michael. answer is Charles. No. <laughs> You can say a name, right? Michael. Yeah, but so it's not Michael. It was Pierre. I don't remember. Pierre or Midjar. Pierre or Midjar. Next one, girls. What what is the name of the biggest technology company in South Korea? Five. That's an easy one. Three. Samsung. Samsung. Two. Yes, Samsung is correct. <laughs> Because I saw it in a Korean Boys, drama. The next one is easy for you too. Boys, pay attention. Which <laughs> you can dance, you can create your TikToks celebrating girls later, but not right now. We haven't finished. You cannot celebrate. Okay. Um, so let me check one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so boys, the end the question for you is which animal can be seen? on the Porsche logo. Which animal can be seen on the Porsche logo? Jaguar. I don't know. Five, four, three. Porsche, Porsche. Two, Porsche. One, time is horse. up. A horse. Black horse. A black horse, that's horse. more specific. Horse, yeah. Stuga, or horse, horse. What kind of horse? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, that's, that's okay. That's okay. So Horse. yes, you got it. Now, girls, you have the advantage. You, you can go ahead in this question. Um, which monarch monarch officially made Valentine's Day a holiday in fifteen thirty seven? Which monarch officially made Valentine's Day a holiday in 1537? If you're telling me the, the name or the number of that monarch, uh, you get the, the, the answer. Five minutes over. Five, five seconds, five. not five minutes. Five. Five seconds. Four. King Henry. Henry, yes. Henry VIII. That was the correct answer. Huh? 
Sang yeah. Google. Yeah. But Google, I'm in the phone. <laughs> okay, boys, this is easy for you too. If you if you like science, I think it's science. Yeah, science. Okay, who was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize in 1903? Five. Three, two, I think Juan Jose knows that one. One, time is up. The first woman to win a Nobel Prize in physics. Marie Curie. Marie Curie, that's correct. Point for the boys. Now, girls, your turn. Okay, the question is, the first dictionary was written by, if you tell me a name or the last name, you get it. Five, four, three, two, one. Robert, 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 Robert. Robert Downey Jr. Yes. <laughs> Guys, you have to pay attention to what they're doing, okay? I cannot do anything about that. Boys, the question is easy too. Um, what is the name of the largest uh, ocean on earth? Five, four, three, two. Atlantic. Pacific. I'm Pacific. sorry, Gustavo. Pacific. The answer was Pacific Ocean. Uh -huh. Teacher, you already asked us that question the last week and I say Pacific uh, and the boys pay attention. Don't, do not pay attention. Okay. Straight to Gustavo's heart. <laughs> now I was thinking about another thing. Sorry. Sorry guys. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Girls, the demolition of the Berlin Wall separating the East and West Germany began, oh, began in what year? Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Answer? Yes, in the 89 or something like that. You have to be sure about the answer. Oh. Hey, in yes. the 89. <laughs> because it was the, the same year that Monsignor Romero died, I think. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you see, that was not Google. She knew the answer. Yeah, it was the same, the same year. Okay, so Blanca, I need you to keep your hand here so that, that the boys see that you are not looking on Google. Okay, so you see, she has her hand on her okay, face. I can only put one because with the other, I, I take. <laughs> you hold, it, you hold the cell phone, I know, I know. Okay. Um, Boys, the last question. To make this more interesting, the last question is going to be worth two points. So, who was the first woman pilot to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean? Five. Four. Can you repeat the question? Who was the first woman, hear. the first woman pilot to fly solo the Atlantic Ocean? Five. Four, three, two. Amelia Earhart. One. Amelia Earhart. That's yes. correct. Yes. Two points. Teacher, but Diego have the camera now. on. Diego, yeah, can you turn on the camera? I think that he took so long to answer. That's not sounds good. Okay, Jennifer is is in the house now, so the discussion is going to be hotter. <laughs> Now, um, girls, the last question. I'm not, I'm not sure if this is easy or difficult, but okay. What is the rarest, the rarest M&M color? What is the rarest, the most, the strangest M&M chocolate color? Five, four, Three, two, one time is up. Give me a color. Red and yellow. Bronze, I think. 
Okay, two girls answer brown, and that is correct. Brown is the strangest Eminem color. So let's for, for two points, let's right? Let's count. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. We and a half for boys. One, two, three, four, five, six. My friend. Seven we are the girl, so. <laughs> One point and a half difference. Okay, congratulations to the girls. They win this time. Uh, so reactions, please, boys. You have to admit, right, uh, that they, they win this time. So it was ladies' night. Now we continue. With Fred. Fred, Freddy's reaction is angry. How do you get the angry face? Oh, I see it now. Okay. With you... some Google in one hand, uh, all is possible. Yeah, like Flor. I think Flor was Googling it. Exactly. Because you use Google. Flor. Because the boys use Google. Okay, so... <laughs> Ladies, we... So... Now we continue with... Uh... There was an emoji that I was going to look for, but... Um... Cheers, right? Cheers for the girls. And for everybody, because I'm sure that you learned something new today. Okay, so ladies, your prize will be a bouquet of flowers. Now we check who's here and who's not. Um, Roxana? Present teacher. Benari? I'm here. Fabio? I'm here. Orlando? I'm here. Nice. Eh, Gustavo? Yes, I'm here. Jennifer? I'm here, teacher. Harvin? Present teacher. Jackie? Present. Laura? Freddy's. I'm here, teacher. Francisco. Present, teacher. Floor. I'm here. Diego. Present. Diana. Present. Blanca. Teacher, present. Okay, there you go. Uh, Marila. Present. I am here. Beatriz. Beatriz is there, okay? She has some problems with the microphone, but she's saying hello to everybody, okay? So, uh, I, am, I am here, I am here too. Okay, Juan Jose, excellent. Now, because of the, I hope that in the future, the trivia is, is not a problem, right? But I will think about other ways to, to, to play it so that we don't have this kind of, uh, let's say, um, second thoughts about how did they get that answer that question right okay so um remember that we're learning together so it's part of the fun now we continue with the next one so um i'm going to share the screen with you again so we go to the next part so this is really um important okay we're going to be using the uh, transition words okay of addition so what are you going to do in, for this exercise uh, jennifer can you please read the indication teacher hello I'm just trying to do the, the screen bigger ah. because I can see. Okay. Uh, now? Yeah, no, yes. Okay. 
uh, write a 10 like paragraph about the advantage and disadvantage of implementing a focus group to test a product, use the transition of addition and the following advantage of disadvantage below. Okay, advantages and disadvantages, right? Advantage and disadvantage, it's singular, plural is advantages and disadvantages. Excellent, thank you so much, uh, Jennifer. So you have some advantages and disadvantages that you are going to include in your paragraph, okay? So uh, it's going to be 10 line paragraph. Who can help me to read the disadvantages, please? Diana and Rolando, the advantages. Thank you. Uh, just one or the three? The three of them, please. Okay, not enough is stereotype. Stereotypes in the selected audience, Good. not considering that considering. the participants. Oh, oh, sorry. Not considering. Not considering that the participants are part of the target language. Dominant personality within the group. Okay, dominant personality within the group. Okay, excellent. So those are some of these of the disadvantages of implementing a focus group. There are not enough stereotypes in the selected audience, not considering that the participants are part of the target language and a dominant personality within the group, okay? So the advantages, Rolando? Advantages, Rel relatively inexpensive, a variety of opinion, accurate, accurate and- Accurate. Accurate and um, um, biased. Um, unbiased, unbiased opinion, um, opinions, unbiased. I'm going to explain you this. Um, the word biased, biased, is for example when um, let's suppose you are conducting a survey, right? You are conducting a survey, and you and you are working as a team. So you conduct the survey, you give it to a lot of people and you are missing one survey and you are like, there are no more people. I'm going to answer the survey for the investigation. That survey is biased. So how do you say that in, in Spanish? When something is biased. For example, uh, I asked I ask you a question, right? So what do you think about the, the Bitcoin? Consider that Bitcoin is changing. The, it's going up and down every day and nobody controls that. If I give you that opinion, I am influencing your answer. So your opinion is not going to be unbiased. It's going to be biased because I gave you some ideas about the Bitcoin. So um, it's not very objective. So, what? So it, it can be like yes. hello i'm going to impartial impartial or uh the the word that we use in um in spanish for investigations is sesgado sesgado okay bias sesgado so there is it's being affected by by, by something right but the opposite right that would be impartial as you mentioned right imparcial so accurate and unbiased opinions so if i cook and i ask my family or my mother is this delicious or not it's my mother she's going to say that it's delicious even if it's not so she's going to be partial but if i ask uh somebody that i don't know okay can you try this food 
and tell me your opinion. Mm, I, I don't, it's not so good, it's too salty. That's unbiased opinion, an unbiased opinion. It's impartial, right? Very good. So that's what you're going to do right now. You are going to write an- uh, In that case, uh -huh. in that case of food, when you want to say that it's not salty, it is the opposite. How do you say it? It's not salty. Mm -hmm. Like, see, it, the uh, simple is the, the word. Simple. Simply? Yeah. When you want to, uh huh. When we when we talk about food. Talking about food. Is that the word? No. Uh, some people might tell you that it's tasteless. Uh, I'm, oh. not sure, I'm not sure. Tasteless. Tasteless. I mean, doesn't have a taste. Okay. Um, tasteless. Tasteless. Because you know that salt gives taste to the food, right? Okay. Okay, so in this moment, that's what you're going to do. I am going to give you specifically 15 minutes. Thank you. You're welcome. 15 minutes to write down your 10 line paragraph. This is important, but it's a little difficult. So, but it's part of learning a language, right? Writing. So, um, I am going to uh, send you to the breakout rooms just in case, just in case. Uh, make sure that your microphones are off, guys. Uh, so just in case you want to discuss a little bit or you have some doubts and you want to comment those doubts with your classmates, but you are going to work individually. Just in case you want to say something or ask something, you can ask your partner, okay? So for that reason, I'm going to send you to the breakout room to do this activity. And if you have a question, you can ask me, okay, directly. So um, let me create the breakout rooms for you. Okay, here we go. Let me check. One, two, three. Yes. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Yes. Two people here. Two people there. Excellent. Uh, okay. Perfect. So we're ready to go. I am going to send you to the breakout rooms and you will have 15 minutes to write down one paragraph, a 10 line paragraph that includes the transitions of addition and the advantages and disadvantages of running a focus group. So uh, now you have more information, you have more vocabulary, so it's going to be a little bit easier for you to do this activity. So um, do you have any questions about the activity? No, it's clear. It's clear. Okay. So what we're going to do in this case, uh, after we finish, is that I am going to ask you to send me a picture, okay? A picture of what you did after the 15 minutes. You can send it to the group if you want, or you can send it directly to me, okay? Just to check, right, or to have an idea about how you organize your, your, your paragraph, okay? So 15 minutes start when you enter the breakout rooms. And here we go.
Okay, let me check. Laura, can you hear me? Hello, teacher. Hello, hello. When it says use the transition of addition, well, uh, I don't get it right. Transition of addition, that is moreover, uh, besides, uh, ah, right. furthermore, and More. yeah, just those four. Well, mm -hmm. So we may, uh, let's say, uh, five sentence paragraph for disadvantage and five sentence paragraph for advantage. If you want, you can do it like that. But remember that it's a paragraph, right? So uh -huh. you have to structure it like a formal paragraph, right? So um, yeah, got it now. you can this say implementing, a, there, are, there are many advantages and disadvantages of implementing a focus group to test a product. However, I think that it's really important to do this process in order to have a good perspective of how the product will uh, be perceived by the customers. Some, mm -hmm. of the, some of the advantages, or one of the most important advantages is that it's relatively inexpensive because you mm -hmm. don't spend any money on that. It's, Moreover, uh, you can get a lot of uh, different opinions because you have a lot of people in the group. Mm -hmm. and then you, and you, you go like that, right? So you, you try to connect the sentences. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So let's see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello, Beatrice. I'm trying to get a uh, black back to the group, but I think she has some problems with the internet. So you can go on with your with your Paragraph. Your paragraph, yes. Okay. okay. Now, hey, your microphone works. That's great. Yes, I have a little problem with my microphone and with the internet too. So I had to connect again. Oh, okay, got it. But uh, but but right now I'm I'm writing my paragraph. Okay, perfect. I'm going to send somebody to this room. Okay. So you're not alone. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hello, Mariela. Hello. Beatriz was alone, so she asked me, can you send Mariela here? <laughs> okay, so here you are. Hello, hello. Can I help you with something, guys? Or everything's clear? Uh, I don't know, teacher, <laughs> where to begin. <laughs> where to begin, okay. Oh, how to begin. Uh -huh. I got I it. Have, I, I, I understand that focus group is when you have uh, some people and... and 
and uh, discuss about something. Yeah, yeah. having ideas uh, for for something. But <clears throat> I don't know how to start with this with this paragraph. Um, I I suppose that we we write we have to write this vintage and, and this vintage and. Mm -hmm. And include some of the transition words that we practice, right? Moreover, furthermore, in addition, besides. Yeah, but we, we will have the idea, the, the sugerencia. Suggestions. Suggestion in the pictures, for example, for example, not enough stereotype. I, I, I understand that I have to write some paragraph using this, 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 this advantage. Uh -huh, the advantages and disadvantages plus the transition words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus this. Well, I will try. I'll try. I'll try. Yeah. Uh, so I was telling your classmates, for example, that you can say, well, uh, when you try to implement a focus group uh, to test a product, uh, there will always be advantages and disadvantages. Uh -huh. One advantage is that uh, the opinions are unbiased mm -hmm. because you don't know the people who are going to evaluate or test your product. Uh -huh. uh, furthermore, or in addition, uh -huh. uh, another advantage is that uh, we have we have a variety of opinion. Okay, have, uh, yeah, like that. And then yeah. when you finish. Uh -huh. On the other side, or on the other hand, comma, uh, there are some problems or some disadvantages with the uh, with this kind of testing. One advantage, or can be that the and then you mention one of the disadvantages, right? And then you say uh, besides that. Um, let me check. Besides that, there are uh, there are not enough stereotypes in the selected audience, which can be a big problem. So like that, okay? Something simple that includes all this vocabulary. All right. Thank you, teacher. I understand. You're welcome. Arvin? Hello, teacher. Is everything clear? Yes, everything clear. I am trying to, to read the, the paragraph. Okay, okay, excellent. Hello, ladies. Do you need any help? Hello, teacher. No, teacher, we're fine. You're fine. Excellent. I'm glad to know that. Thank you. For me in the dictionary, a charge of language. Maybe the teacher. Language. Languages. Hello, hello. Hello, teacher. We have a doubt. Okay, tell me. Uh, 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 what is no. refer when it says target languages? Target Not languages. consider that participants are part of the target language. Well, here there's a probably there was a typo here. Uh, not considering that the participants are part of the target audience. That would be a audience. Question. Oh, okay, that, that didn't make more sense. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to send a message now that you mentioned that. Mm, it's no mistake. Target audience. <laughs> the teacher has a connection. You think I it is target audience? Target. Ah. 
Hello, hello. Hello, teacher. Can I help you with something here? Hi, teacher. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I write uh, in my phone the the the, the line paragraph. for the paragraph. Exactly. Ah, okay, okay, got it. I I'm not sure if if this is the the correct writing. In this case, you have to use the information that appears in the in the exercise. Yes. So you are going to talk about advantages and disadvantages yes. of running or implementing a focus group to test a product. So you have to mention these ones that appear on the on the page number twenty two. Yes, uh, I I have this 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 <clears throat> this term uh, because to describe for for example the disadvantage and advantage, uh -huh. but. If I need to change, I no problem. You don't need to change it. You don't need to change it. You just have to uh, include the information in the paragraph. For mm -hmm. example, uh, you say, well, to implement a focus group uh, oh. to test a product, uh, you need to consider that there are advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. For example, one disadvantage can be that you do not consider that the participants are part of the target audience. Oh, okay. Oh. But, but an advantage could be that you will have a variety of opinions. Mm -hmm. In addition, in addition to the disadvantages, uh, something important is the dominant personality within the group mm -hmm. because some people are leaders and they can mm -hmm. have a different they can have a discussion about that oh, okay uh, moreover not having enough stereotypes in the selected audience could affect the results mm -hmm. you understand i i i i I have the idea. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. I will be back later. Okay. Give a small, if you give a small size of the, of the discussion, maybe you don't have a, no representative samples. I don't know even if you understand. Yes. The, the, how, how, how call when you say uh, muestra, sample? Mm -hmm. Sample? Sample, yes. Okay, if the sample of the focus group is not representative, uh, maybe the, the answer or the discussion is not uh, it's not enough, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, if you want to to get a um, good, um, uh, in, in this case, sometimes you didn't uh, get your objectives uh, because the the group is not a representative. It is a problem sometimes. Yes. We have five disadvantage, which change to advantage for make things. The boat. Uh, which? Uh, we have five disadvantage. Can we create a uh, yes. uh, 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 
advantage for for have the the two the two samples if you want yes that's not a problem advantage. it's advantage i can write that okay uh, okay Juan Jose uh, we can hear for example we can hear um, I don't know this provide insight for the most appropriate way to talk about product service or brands maybe it's advantage no hello hello hi hello, teacher. teacher are you almost finished no <laughs> no yet not yet but you have yeah. uh progress right you have made a progress yeah we miss disadvantages 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 uh-huh disadvantages yes Okay, um, let's take uh, Miguel. Mm -hmm. I think that we can obtain better information than in a survey. Survey. Survey, because yeah. in a survey, the answer are limited, limited to um, maybe a number of of answer if it's a selection multiple multiple choice multiple choice and is uh easier the information is easier to handle i think we can add this as advantage. What do you think? Hi. Well, I, I excuse me. I I don't hear you very well, but I I try to do uh, this this advantage. For example, I think uh, we're talking about the real estate. Um, one advantage can be the when you um, when you uh, uh, need a, a home, uh, the, this advantage can be the the uh, there are some people then uh, no, no 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 are, no are uh. Mm. helpful for example yeah uh, what do you think that it's possible to have a shy person in the group maybe this could be in a on this uh ventures. Okay, uh, dear students, the time is up for the sharing or thinking about what you're going to say related to the focus group, advantages and disadvantages. So um, you can still you can still continue working on the essay, right? So tomorrow I'm going to ask some volunteers to read the essay for us. So we have an idea about how you organize the sentences, how you include the transition words of addition, right? Uh, moreover, besides, furthermore, and, and that's it. Those are the, 
in addition, moreover, besides, and furthermore, right? So those are the four that we practiced plus the advantages and disadvantages that appear on the book. Now, uh, keep on working, keep on working on, the, on, your, on your paragraph because this takes time, okay? And we cannot really do a complete work in just one class. I feel that it's not enough. So for that reason, I'm going to give you a little bit of time for you to finish. If somebody finished, right now and you want to share with us please do it please do it and don't forget about your cameras guys right now you see jackie rolando and fabio okay i see beatrice in the mountains strolling switzerland with heidi okay Teacher, i'm i'm if i turn on my camera i'm start to hear you like a robotic voice Oh, okay. So the connection is not so good. Yeah, me yeah. too. My internet is it's failing a lot. We have problems with the internet, guys. Uh, we have to do something about. I'm here. It. I'm, I'm 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 working here. Maybe we need to start. We need to start a business with internet. So the internet that we provide will be better. But we need more money for that. Anyway. Claro, <laughs> Claro, don't want to came and put me more. Mega. <laughs> oh, the problem want, is the the problem is El Salvador is like a roller coaster in in the signal for internet is not like uh, like the radio the 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 signal for for internet is is um, plain or uh, directly mm -hmm. don't have curves and this is the problem for for the signal in El Salvador. The that, signal, ah, the, the, the signal, yeah. Uh, uh, the uh, how say relieve, relief, relief. relief. Okay, the, re, the relief in El Salvador is like like a roller coaster. This is the problem. So it's because of our geographical, yeah, exactly uh, structure. Okay, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, but it makes sense. It makes sense. Okay, so um, maybe one day we're going to have another type of internet. Now, we're going to go on with the next part. So right now you can use a dictionary, you can use Google because we're going to investigate five, well, four different terms. So you're going to go online and to find out more about key terms relating to product testing. You are going to write down the definitions in your deck, in your notebook, in your cell phone, computer, whatever you have. The number one that you're going to investigate is targeted sample. Number two, random sample. Number three, competitive threat. And number four, unbiased. A definition, okay? No translation, definition. If you want to write the translation, that's okay, but you need to include the definition too. So right now you have exactly, my God, I cannot see how much time we have left. Houston, we have a problem. Okay. Let them in. Ten minutes. 10 minutes. Okay, so we only have five minutes to try to find some definitions. Uh, later, we are going to share with, uh, with the class. Okay, sure. so let's do something. Let's do something uh, to make it faster. Girls, please look for competitive threats and unbiased. Boys, please look for targeted sample and random sample. Okay, look for the definitions, and then after five minutes, we are going to share. Maximum five minutes. You can do it in less time. Okay, so go to the internet, please. And when you have the definition, copy that in your notebook, and we're going to share. If we have different definitions, better. So we can decide which definition is the most appropriate, okay, for this. Uh, Freddy's, you had a question? Yeah, I'm using the dictionary that you share. 
Uh, for this one, I don't think it's going to work because oh, okay. these are complex terms. So you have to go to the internet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. We have three more minutes for you to Google the definitions. Okay, one more minute. Teacher, don't, forget I... to, don't forget to write definitions, right? Practice writing with little definitions, but you are practicing writing. That is important. Teacher, I send uh, two definitions to the WhatsApp chat. Can you see and tell me your opinion? Okay. But still, you need to copy them, right? Uh, yeah, 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 perfect. Let me check. Okay, I like them. They're really good. Uh, I think it's the same one that Diego found. Yeah, good. Both definitions are okay. Thank you. Freddy's got another one. Let me check. It's loading. Target population, okay, but that's another um, another definition, Freddy. It's, it's a target population. Well, it's related, right, to the targeted sample. Uh, it's it's uh, it's it's related. Okay, the time is up. So let's check. Okay, I need one volunteer for every definition. So who is going to give us a definition for targeted sample? Rolando, would you like to try it out? Okay. Well, target sample. It is a purposeful systematic method, method, method. by mm -hmm. method, method by with which controller list of specific field population within her geographical district are developed and the title plans are designed to recruit adequate number of case, cases cases yeah with each of the targets okay let's stop there excellent and we're going to go on with the random sample. So does anybody have a different definition for targeted sample? You can 
share that definition, right? But this definition is, is appropriate. So yes, random sample, another volunteer, s'il vous plaît, Monsieur. Me teacher. Wait, we, we need a volunteer for every definition. So you help us with the first one. We need help with the another volunteer with the second one. Uh, okay, me for random. Okay, go ahead. Random sample. Okay, a uh, simple random, a uh, simple random sample is a subset of a statistic population in which each member of the subset has an equal probability of being chosen. An All example right. for a simple random mm -hmm. uh, will be the name of 25 employees being chosen out of hat from a company of 250 employees. This is a, a little bit simple. It's a, it's a good example. Yeah, it's a good mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, for example, if in, in this group, we have around 24 people, right? 24 students. If I put all your all your names in a piece of paper, right, and I randomly, without looking at the at the, let's suppose I put them in a, in a box, right, all the names, and I I um, I pick one without looking at the name, that is random selection because I'm not looking at the names. I look at the name after I pick it up, right after I select it. So. Uh -huh. uh, all have the, the equal probability. Probability, that's correct. Yes. Of being chosen. Excellent. Now I need one volunteer. Thank you so much, Rolando and Gustavo for the first two definitions. One volunteer for competitive threat. For unbiased, Blanca wrote in the chat that she wants to read that definition. So who wants to help us with the number three? Random sample, thank you, uh, Floor and Miguel. Floor ones. Floor ones, okay, Floor, competitive, competitive threat, please. Is, is a competition that hasn't occurred, but has potential to occur. In other words, it is a risk of competition. That's correct, so um, it doesn't exist but it's a possibility, right? A possible competitor. Um, for example, let's suppose that Floor has her, her restaurant business, but Diana is thinking, mm, I can have that business with my husband too. So Diana is a competitive threat for Floor because suppose, let's suppose, right? They live in the same neighborhood in the same city so in the same block so that's a competitive competitive threat thank you so much um floor and the last one blanca okay um i have two definitions able to judge fairly because you are not influenced by your own opinions it's the first one and a sam a sample drawn and recorded by a method which is free from bias. This implies not only freedom from bias in the method of selection, uh, like random sampling, but freedom from any bias to procedure. Procedure. Okay, correct. So yeah. unbiased, right? Something that hasn't been influenced by external factors so it's a very impartial, okay, opinion, impartial participant. So it's unbiased. Something or someone that has not been influenced or affected by another factor. So uh, it's objective, it's objective, okay? Now we continue with the attendance. So I'm going to say your names, call out your names quickly and you tell me if you're present or not. So, Beatriz. I'm here. Mariela. I'm here. Blanca. I'm here. Okay. Uh, Diana. 
sorry. No problem. Diego? Present. Floor? Francisco? Present, teacher. Freddy's? Okay. Eh, Laura? No está. Okay. Laura no está. Okay. Teacher, I'm here. Uh, Laura se fue. Laura is gone. Okay. Uh, Floor is here. Okay. Perfect. We continue with Jackie. I'm here. Okay. Jennifer. I'm here. I am forgetting Jennifer's face. I don't know why. I haven't seen her in a long time. Me too, teacher. Me too. <laughs> okay, we continue with Juan Jose. Yes, I'm here. Gustavo. Yep. Miguel Angel. Here. Fabio. I'm here. Orlando. Hi, 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 hi. Yanari. Uh, Roxana. Present teacher. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, so I already have uh, some people who answer the, the, well, who finished or did some progress in the paragraph, okay? They already sent me the message with the picture uh, through WhatsApp. So please, as soon as you finish your paragraph, Send it to me so I can take a look and have an idea about how you did it. Now, uh, Rolando, I wanted to ask you if you could stay for the last 10 minutes tonight. Uh, it could be tomorrow. It could be tomorrow if, uh, yes. Yes. Let me check. Who else is missing here? Okay, Laura is not here. I already mentioned that. Um, Gianari. You were here yes, last teacher. You were here last week or not? Uh, last week. Yeah, right? So it was a yes, Friday on Friday. So after Rolando, the next one yes. is Mariela. I don't know. How's your time right now, Mariela? I can't today, teacher, sorry. You can't today, tonight. So, Miguel Angel, you're next. Okay, teacher, not a problem. Not a problem, excellent. So guys, uh, can you please, well, we are just 18 right now, but we'll try to take the picture, the group picture for this week. Okay, for the, well, corresponding to the week number two. So let's get ready. Okay, if you didn't go to the beauty salon or to the barber shop, don't worry. That's okay. This is not for Facebook, it's just for us. Okay. A big smile, camera ready, filters if you want, that's okay. For Instagram, okay. My, one. Ca my camera doesn't work. Doesn't work. Okay. So you see, it's not because we are looking for information on Google, it's because it doesn't work. Now, uh, ready? Three, two, one. There you go. Perfect. I think I got everybody. So thank you so much, guys. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday. So it's fun Ooh. Friday. Yeah. I need to think about what I'm going to do with Hi. you tomorrow. Good so. night, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night, Jennifer. Good night, Jennifer. Good night, Jennifer. Good night. Good night, good night, good night, good night Mike. Take care, guys. Good night. Good night, Rolando. Bye bye. Take bye, teacher. Bye. See, see you tomorrow. See you, tom see you tomorrow. See you, man. Okay, apparently my connection is unstable, but, anyways, we have yes, to go on. My, my connection is good in this moment. <laughs> okay, lucky you. Yes. Well, uh, teacher, how uh, some question about the, this class? Okay. Uh, for example, the. Um, Tell me. 
transition of the an addition. I don't clear uh, yet. Can you explain me the how to use different uh, this uh, 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 themes, for for example, uh -huh. or when or when I use this word, for example, look in size, in addition, furthermore, more more the word when More I over, use uh, mm -hmm. when I use this this uh, words. Okay, perfect. That's a good question. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, uh, we need to be clear that we use transition words of addition to mention more information about the topic, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing that we have to remember. Uh, the second one is that um, check the the four of them. The four of them are similar. Okay, the four of them are similar. So um, I don't know if you saw the, but in the WhatsApp group, Freddy's was sharing some definitions from the dictionary, and mm -hmm. from. Uh, the one that I share with you through through the group, right? So yes, yes. Um, the first one is, is furthermore. Mm -hmm. This is now comparable. Okay, this is not comparable. So it's just a. How can we use the diff? How can we differentiate it from, in addition to or besides? When you say in addition to or besides, you are adding you are adding more information about the topic. Mm -hmm. You are comparing, you are comparing the previous information with the new information. So, for example, uh, if you talk about your hobbies, right? I like going shopping. I like taking pictures. In addition, in addition, I like traveling and playing playing soccer. Mm -hmm. and listening to music and watching movies so when you use in addition or besides you are adding more to the previous topic mm -hmm. sure, but i i can use in these uh sentences for example then or a, a connecting uh, okay it is possible to, to use other connectors or transition words or linky words mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you want to express something else. Mm -hmm. But these specific words are used when you want to add, to include more information. More information. Only, yeah. only, only that uh, I add more information. Uh-huh, yeah. Only. So okay. yeah, right now we only focus on using these four words to express addition, addition. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. But of course, if in your paragraph, in your ideas, in your speech, you want to mention something else that is not addition, you can use them. You can say then, you can say first, you can say mm -hmm. next. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it, you are expressing a different idea. When you say first, second, next, finally, those are transition words to organize your ideas, mm -hmm. not okay. to add more information. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's about order. These ones are about addition. Mm -hmm. uh, Let me check what else. Moreover, uh, not comparable in addition to what has been said. Furthermore, additionally, we can use that, right? Moreover. And um, basically, as I was telling you, they are similar in meaning, but furthermore, and in addition, are more formal than besides and moreover. 
-hmm. That is one difference. Furthermore, and in addition, are more formal, moreover, and besides, are a little bit more casual, not too formal. Um, I don't understand very well, teacher. What is the difference? Okay, what I was telling you, right? When you say in addition, or you say furthermore, these two mm -hmm. phrases or words are formal. Mm -hmm. When you say moreover and besides, they are more casual, a little more frequent or everyday, mm -hmm. that you, people use them in everyday. But the four of them have a similar meaning. Mm -hmm. They have a similar meaning. So that would be a difference. Okay, that uh, they, they are used in more formal context, ambas. In addition, and furthermore, son poco más formales mm -hmm. que las otras dos, pero las cuatro expresiones mm -hmm. se refieren a además. 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 Okay, mm -hmm. okay. perfect. Well, um, I, I try to understand understand more and about this yeah when i told you about furthermore or moreover these two expressions are not comparing so mm -hmm. they are adding information but the information is different from the previous mm -hmm. but okay. when you say more uh when you say besides or you say in addition you add more information about the same topic. Okay. Okay. Eh, moreover, y furthermore, lo utilizamos para expresar eh, que hay, vamos a agregar algo más, pero que no está relacionado, relacionado al mismo tema. Uh -huh. O sea, voy a agregar más información, pero no al mismo pero, tema que estaba mencionando. Eso pero cuando que, digo uh -huh. moreover, cuando digo uh, in addition or besides, se refiere al mismo. Al mismo tema, agregar uh -huh. y siempre agregando más información. Esa es uh -huh. la diferencia entre ambas. Correcto, correcto. Ahí sí. Uh -huh. Ok, that's, that's ok. Well, uh, um, only, only that the question, for example, uh, this, this, uh, for me, difficult, but uh, I, I was confused, but uh, you helped me about this. Okay, I'm glad to help you and I'm glad that you understood. Okay, so. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome, my pleasure. So take good care of yourself, Miguel. Thank you for staying tonight. I hope that everything is clear now. And if you have any other doubts, remember that mm -hmm. I'm here to help you, right? So that Thank is my, you. my purpose. Okay, not a problem, teacher. Uh, some question that I have, I will ask you. Yeah, please. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, teacher, thank you for your help and thank you for teach, teach me and teach us a classmate. Nah, don't mention it. I enjoy doing it. Okay. Okay, Perfect, have teacher. a good night, man. Take care of yourself. Thank you, teacher. Have a good night. You too. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, teacher. Okay, goodbye, man. Goodbye.